Hello everyone, welcome once again to Vic Math Class. I am Victor Odigoma Ohia. All right, um, at the level where we are right now, we are looking at why examinable questions that come from the geometric progression. We have solved a lot of them already, and um, I think this should be the 16th class or thereabout. Um, um, what we have on the board here is another why examinable question. And let's look at it and see how we can be able to resolve it. Thank you. Stay put. So here we go. We are looking at the question that says, find the number of terms in a geometric progression given that the first term is five whole number, one over three K, and 243 K over 256. And the common ratio is, three over four remember as i said look for an access point and how you start is by taking the mathematical expression for this you see solution and um you say that dn is equal to a r is for n minus one okay what did they give us in line with this uh, the first term is this Wow, so I know A now, that A is equals to, I will change this thing to an improper fraction. Three times five is 15 plus one. That's 16K over three, that's A. And then uh, the last term, last term there, so that is TL, T last is 243K over, 256 and they also give us the common ratio r to be 3 over 4 3 over 4 okay so i can put all these things in position this representing this okay so i will have t last i'm sure you understand what i mean by t last meaning that this sequence will also give us as this sequence is used to derive the nth term of a geometric progression, you can use it to find that last term and all that that are even after it. I'm sure you understand that explanation. Please, that's why I say check out the other videos, even the introductory aspect, so that it will help you a lot to understand what we are doing at this level. All right, so here we go. T last is equals to A first term 16K over 3, common ratio 3 over 4 to power n minus 1. We don't know the number of terms. That's what they ask us to find that is existing between this first term and that last term, this last term. So I will substitute here for the last term 2, 4, 3k over 256 equals to 16k over 3 into 3 over 4 to power n minus one. All right, what are we going to do? Man, if you have, um, you already know, if you have, say, 10 equals to two x, what do you normally do? You divide both sides by two. So can you see that what you are looking for is within here, and there is something like a coefficient sort of attached to this. So I'm going to use this now. Divide both sides by what this. And how to take away this now is to bring 16 over k. I mean 16k over 3 divided by the all. Oh, everything here divided by 16k over 3 so that this will cancel this. And what I did in this right hand side, I also do it in left, this left hand side. So will you understand it if I present it in this manner? That manner is, that manner is this. Oh, God help me. If I multiply both sides by the inverse of this, do you understand what I said? Multiply both sides by the inverse. Let me do something. Let me do something that will help you to get this. If I say 2x is equal to 10, you know, it's either I divide, say, 2x over 2 equals to 10 over 2, or I can say 1 over 2 in bracket 2x equal to 1 over 2 in bracket 10. It's the same thing. 
is the same thing. So this you cancel this, you have x yeah, equals to this is five. It's the same thing as writing it like this. So please, that's exactly what I'm going to do here. I will multiply both sides by I will multiply both sides by the inverse, the inverse, the inverse, the inverse of two. The inverse of two is one over two. So I will multiply both this side and this side by one over two, one over two. That is what I want to do. Please. So I will say 3 over 16k, 3 over 16k in bracket 243k over 256k equals to, you know now, 3 over 16k, then multiplying 16k over 3 then into you, you understand that now this is the inverse i'm using to multiply what is already existing and then into 3 over 4 raised to the power n minus 1 so that do you see that this will take away this huh? okay you see that what is left here now is 3 over 4 raised to the power n minus 1 that is what is left so over here I think K can cancel K here. Can 3 divide 256? You can just check that. 256 divided by 3. 256 divided by 3. It gave me a decimal value. I'm not going to work with it. 16. Can 16 divide 243? No, no, no. This is in powers of 3. And this is 3. So let me bring something down. 3 to power 1 times times two four three i think three divided is eight one three again twenty seven three again nine three again three three again one one two three four five so this is three raised to power five all over sixteen and this since since here i'm seeing four well this one has balanced with this and let me check what we balance with this. 16 here is 4 raised power 2. Multiplying 256. 256. 256. 256. Divided, 256 divided by 4. 256 divided by 4. 64. Wow. 64. Four divided by four again, divided by four again, sixteen. Four, four, four. That should be four, four, then one. This should be four. Rest the power four. We are very close. We are very close. We are very close. So I can gather organize this now to become by the principle of indices multiplication of the same base you add their powers you have three to the power one plus five all over this is four to the power two plus four so equals to three over four to the power n minus one so this is three raised to the power six over this is four raised to the power six so if you check out what is going on three over four you realize that you are close to having 3 over 4, all raised to the power 6, being this, being equated to, what did I write here? This should be n minus 1. So, equated to 3 over 4, raised to the power n minus 1. Can you see we are there? So, you can see that the base now are the same. So you can say since the base are equal, equate the powers. Put it into right and under here. I'm just trying to manage time and space. Put it into right and under here. Since the base are equal, equate the powers. And you now say 6. You now say 6 is equal to n minus 1. It then means 6 plus 1 equals to n. Then means n is equal to 7. The number of terms, 
that is existing between this first term, between this first term and this last term, there are six, there are seven in number. There are seven in number. Okay? There are seven in number. I am sure the explanation is very, very okay. I don't think there is anything that is not well understood here. Please, you watch this again and again so that you can understand the detail. I am very elaborate. I don't think there is anything I made to be too cumbersome for someone to understand here. Okay? I'm very elaborate. I trust God to help you in the rest. Okay? Thank you so much for being part of the class.